God is so good. Hallelujah. He is our Father. And when we think of the goodness of God, His mercy, how wonderful God is, it's possible for us sometimes who are fathers to be highlighted with our own inadequacies and weaknesses. Because we know as fathers that we have not being perfect fathers. There is no perfect father in this world. If you feel condemned as a father today and uh, you feel that you have not done, fulfilled your responsibility the way it should have been, I want to tell you, if you're still alive, there's healing and there's help for you. While there is life, there is hope. And so all is not lost. As long as there is life, all is not lost. About a month ago, there was an old man who was in his last stages and uh, he was taken to a hospital for treatment. And uh, he was uh, put into that room and then the nurse came in and uh, she mentioned him by name and said, Mr. So-and-so, I'm the nurse. Uh, in charge of you and I'll be taking care of you and my name is uh, such and such and uh, and so on and she uh, went out of the room and she was out there and she couldn't hold it any longer she came running back into the room because she knew suddenly that it was the father her own father, who had walked out on them when she was about four years old. And she didn't know where he was. Her mother didn't know where he was. And suddenly here, he ends up in that same hospital, in that room, and she's been assigned to take care of him. And she walked back into the room, and she, she asked him, uh, do you have a family? He said, yes, but I walked out of my family. Do you have any children? And he said, yes. She said, what are their names? And he mentioned her name. And suddenly there was a reunion of a long lost broken relationship over 40 years they hugged each other and uh, uh, he said the moment you walked in I knew you were my daughter and uh, he just had a few months to live but they were happy that all the years that were lost were restored in those few months isn't that wonderful? And they thank the Lord for that great restoration. God is a God of restoration. God is a God of hope. God is a God <clears throat> who never gives up on us. And no matter what your situation, the Lord is there. And it's possible for fathers to feel very inadequate and condemned. And... Uh, 
Sometimes if there's been a bad relationship between the father and the children, it has so many repercussions from generation to generation. But you know something? If you have a dad around in your home, a physical body walking around, be thankful. Be thankful. I didn't have a father from the time I was eight years old. And my younger brother was born three months after my father died. He had never seen his dad. I remember a few things about my father. I remember going into his office at the Department of Education and being in his room a little bit. I remember him coming and picking me up at St. Thomas's Prep. I remember him uh, sitting me on his lap and singing a nice old traditional folk song. Uh, I remember him holding my hand and taking me to the, to the Sapphire Theater that was there down W.S. Ilomawata for a movie. A few things like that. And uh, I remember the day he was uh, of his funeral. I remember also that I was so lacking in understanding that I was playing marbles when they were closing his casket. And they had to bring me there before they closed the casket. And uh, all these years, I've not had a father. I don't blame God for that. Uh, and I want all of you young people and everybody else who has a father <clears throat> in your home, it doesn't matter whether he's a, you consider him good or not so good or whatever, you need to be thankful that he's there. You need to be thankful that he's there to support you. In fact, if your father was not supporting you, your mother would be doing this both jobs just like my mother did, father and mother, and uh, they would have a rough time. Life would be very tough. Thank God for fathers. Let's give them an applause. <clears throat> Jesus probably had no father for most of his life. How do we know that? Because the gospel writers don't mention too much about Joseph. Except for the, for the birth narratives. There isn't much told about Joseph. So the likelihood is that Joseph passed away during Jesus' childhood. So he probably grew up without much knowledge of his earthly father. I want to turn your Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, from verse 1 onwards, says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, and I want all of us to, to pray and read this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. We know it by memory. That's all right. Just take your Bible and read this prayer together. It's a prayer to our Heavenly Father. All together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, ten, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, 
will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask him? You know, every time we look at biblical descriptions of our heavenly Father, we may have a tendency to feel a little discouraged and disheartened. And we may think that if we are not perfect fathers, then we are nothing at all. I want you to deliver yourself from that kind of thinking. You know something? We sometimes bring into our lives, into our adult life, things that we have experienced in our own childhood. God is above everything else and he can deliver you. He can set you free, he can heal you. I don't think that I am psychologically suffering because I didn't have a father for most of my life. I thank God for that, that my mother came to know the Lord and my father uh, was led to the Lord two weeks before he died by two wonderful Pentecostal women who went to the hospital when he had a heart attack. And if they had not gone there, they didn't say, he's a man, I'm a woman, I don't think he'll listen to me and so on. They just went there and shared the gospel. And on that hospital bed, my father repented and he came to know the Lord. Now he's in the presence of God and one day I will see him. He was gone two weeks after that, June 8th, 1953. And uh, I don't think even my brother suffers psychologically because his father was not there for all his life because we have a heavenly father and all the deficiencies and inadequacies of human relationship not only in the father child relationship but every other relationship is fulfilled by God because he's the perfect father as we heard and God is able to do exceeding abundantly than we can ever ask or think there's a big problem for people though and that is that sometimes they cannot forgive their fathers. The Bible tells us that God is our provider. He's the one who gives us our daily bread. He's the ideal father. He's also the one who forgives because in the Lord's Prayer it says, Father forgive us as we forgive them that trespass against us. He's also the giver of all good gifts, as Jesus said. The Heavenly Father gives all good gifts and we as children know that we can run to our dads and, and get stuff from them. We know that. They are providers. They are givers. And then finally the Lord said, if you being evil and you're looking at fathers because human nature is evil not good and because we are fallen and we are living in a fallen world we don't behave right and even after we have encountered God in our lives we don't become perfect people we are on the road to perfection with God's intervention in our lives and Jesus said, you being evil, these fathers were evil, but he said, though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. So sometimes the fathers who are not so good, they still give good gifts to their children. And then Jesus said, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that love him? And when Jesus said, you can have the Holy Spirit, what he was telling us was that when you have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the capacity within me to face every situation that will come into my life by his power and forgive and experience victory in that situation. And if your home is not the home you dreamt it would be, if your father is quite a ways different from 
the heavenly father and if you have a father who abdicated his responsibility and walked away or if you have not known an earthly father all your life i want to tell you that you can stop that problem in this generation your family tree can get cleansed now and you can make that choice yes you may have suffered but you can choose to have healing in this generation so that from now onwards your posterity will be blessed so don't look back on the past and then say to yourself well you know i am this way because my father was that way you know what you're doing you're only reinforcing the idea that you are going to be a failure god doesn't want you to be a failure you don't have to be a failure you can be touched and you can be healed by the power of god no matter what your family situation no matter what your home situation is and again i say if you have a father in your home whether he is good or bad whether he is a drunkard or an addict if you have a physical body walking in your home thank god for that thank god for that yes thank god for that because there are many many kids in this world millions of them who don't have a physical image they can look at and say that's my dad there are many even in our own country so if there is a dad thank god that is there and you know what if that dad is not saved instead of focusing on his problems what we should be doing is we should be praying for his salvation did you hear that and if you're a christian and your dad is not a believer if you can ever find fault with him the chances are that he will get more and more distant from the gospel the worst thing for you will be to be in heaven and not your not see your dad there you want to reach him for the lord thank god for families where everybody has come to know the lord so i'll tell you fathers know what they ought to be they know and here at calvary church we constantly talk about uh, people's responsibilities from the word of god and so people know that but i want to focus today because i feel that this is important on children and wives and mothers and how we can do what the bible asks us to do towards our fathers you know what the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 honor your father and your mother can we say it honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and this is the commandment with promise the bible tells us in other words if you want success and prosperity in your life you should honor your father and mother it doesn't say honor your father if he's a good father does it does he say that no it just says honor your father just because the biological reason that he's your father honor him and if you don't honor him you are creating the formula for misery in your own life and i'll tell you some of the ways in which that misery plays out because in over 40 years of ministry god has given me the grace to to deal with so many kinds of people on all continents and i've seen over and over again how these kinds of things have played themselves out into into adulthood because we don't deal with them if you have resentment to your father that resentment and anger inside you will cause all kinds of problems for you when you are a grown up person you have an opportunity you have an opportunity to deal with it 
if you are a woman and you had a bad experience with your father you haven't forgiven him let me put it straight when you get married the chances are the chances are you may be trying to hide it cover it up the chances are that you will have problems in your marital relationship especially when your husband gets to the age which you remember of your father when you had any bad experiences with him let's say you were you had bad experiences with your dad when you were a teenager and he was hard on you and your dad was about 40 years old you get married you're in your 20s and when your husband gets to about 40 years and you see some connection between him and your father that's locked in your memory in your subconscious unbeknownst to you you'll be reacting in ways to your husband that reflect the anger and the hostility that you have within towards your father who may not even be alive so now what happens as a result of it what's going to happen is you're going to develop marital problems and you won't know what the solution to it and you don't know what the reason is i'm telling you the reason because god wants you to deal with unresolved conflicts when jesus comes into your life he wants to heal you don't think that is a great thing to have resentment against your parents it won't help you and if you don't forgive you're the one who's going to be hurt most if you don't forgive you're the one who's going to be hurt most if i don't forgive i'm the one who's going to be hurt most can i say it okay if i don't forgive i'm the one who's going to be hurt most and enlightened self interest tells me i don't want to be hurt i don't want to ruin my adulthood i don't want to live my life with you know in a oblong fashion and have all kinds of issues in my life second thing that can happen to you is in your social relationships and wherever you work if you have a bad relationship that is not resolved or you're not forgiven and dealt with it you will react against all kinds of authority i've met preachers who had problems like that i can think of one preacher right now whose father was a drunkard and uh, and this preacher has not really i don't know he has not really dealt with that issue and so this preacher uh he always has a problem with any kind of supervision and the moment somebody tries to give him instructions he reacts against it and the reason for it is because he has had a bad relationship with his father and he reacts and rebelled against his father's authority the father is dead and gone who is suffering the father is gone who is suffering now this guy is suffering because he's got that rebellious attitude and that hostility within him that is unresolved at the close i'm going to tell you how to deal with it even if your father is gone you have difficulty to correct your own weaknesses now we know that some fathers do not do not take over spiritual leadership in their homes some fathers give all that responsibility to the mother for some reason they don't want to take spiritual leadership I want to tell you fathers you know something your son if you have one will grow up like you if you have a son and he gets married unless god intervenes in his life he will also not be able to take spiritual leadership in his home unless god intervenes you know why because he has not seen a model of spiritual leadership in the home 
but all is not lost if you're a father who's still around all is not lost if you're a son and your father is gone my father was gone but i took spiritual leadership in our home so all is not lost because our perfect heavenly father is able to make up everything that is lost you will also find it difficult to relate to god and this is one of the most critical issues that happens when people do not have a proper relationship with their fathers they have a difficulty relating to god who is our heavenly father again all is not lost if you are still alive that's hope for you you can correct it today it can happen but don't pass it on to your children we are not going to allow the enemy to destroy our posterity right huh we are not going to allow the enemy to destroy the future generations we are going to deal with it now and experience his healing and have wholesomeness in our lives so that from now on from generation to generation the blessing of god can be there i just have a word to say to all our mothers and wives i know that many wives are oppressed and suffer because of the inconsiderate behavior and abuse of their husbands this is the reality in our world that is why all over the world there is a rising consciousness of the rights of women because we know that in societies all over the world women are suppressed women are looked down upon and in certain societies men have a big problem to get any kind of advice or instruction from women but i have found that a lot of women are far more efficient and diligent in the way they do things than the way some men do things usually if you give a woman a job she look into all the details and cover the whole thing up and have it done i can't say that about all men yet for all in many societies women are pushed down when god said that he has made both male and female in his image he hasn't made the man in his image in his image made he them that is why the most important attribute of god which is what what is the most in- important and wonderful attribute of god that we we love there's a clue for you love where do you see it most in women where do you find understanding compassion and patience in women because that's a reflection of the nature of god both male and female are made in the image of god we are always thankful for for the women who contribute to ministry that is why at calvary church we believe in women pastors we have no problem with women pastors i know some women have problems with women pastors that's that's a queer thing about it what does it matter if god is speaking whether it's through a man or a woman does it matter if it's god's message and if god has given gifts who are we to ridicule in the old testament god used women as leaders of armies <laughs> and deborah for example is a woman who was a quite strong and and uh, there was a guy called berak who came to 
Hezekiah, who was actually had the responsibility, but he was so timid that Deborah said to him, okay, I'll go and do it for you, but remember that if I do it, I'm going to get the credit, not you. <laughs> and she went and she defeated the enemies. For years and years, women have been listening to men, preachers and pastors who have no understanding of their problems. Absolutely. But they've silently in churches suffered and listened. The Ceylon Pentecostal Mission was the, probably the pioneering church that, that gave women their place in ministry by having full-time workers in the Ceylon Pentecostal Mission and so on. In some churches in other parts of the world, it's a big issue to have a woman as a pastor. That's a big issue. They're wasting their time. God has given gifts and abilities. Who are we to, to stand against that? And we are thankful for women pastors and Christian workers. But I have something to say to all mothers, especially if you are a person who has been, you know, pressed down and uh, persecuted and... Uh, hurt by the insensitive behavior of your husband. You know what can happen to you? You can be a hurt person. And that hurt can go deep into your soul. And without your knowledge, you can transfer that heart of hurt to your children. If you ridicule your husband, uh, and if you criticize him to them, that's going to stay with them. And they're going to pick up that offense and have animosity towards their dad. And as a result of it, they are going to get hurt. And then when you, are, you give your daughter or your son in marriage and you find that they're having problems... Now you'll know that the reason for it could be your behavior. Now understand that some of these hurts are hard to bear. But I want to tell you again, God is able. He can heal you. He can heal you. Don't transfer that hurt that you have to your children. And if you've done that, put it right with your kid also. And if you're a child and you have been mean to your father, been rude to him, go and ask him forgiveness. He may not change. That's not the issue. You've got to put your things right. And if you're a father and you know that you have not delivered on the responsibilities that God has given to you, don't be too proud to go to your father, to your children and ask them for forgiveness. If you've done something that really has damaged them, that will melt them and heal the relationship. And the next few years of your life may be good because, and God will restore to you what the palmer worm and the, the canker worm has eaten, and your life will be different, at least for those few years. And that will make all the difference in their lives. You'll be dead and gone. But they will go on and they will go on healed and whole because you did that and that reconciliation took place. God has so much in store for all of us and uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't cheat ourselves of the wonderful healing that God can give to us. We can experience his healing in our lives and we can experience his healing in our homes. We can experience his healing in our personal relationships. And life can be different for us. If we want God to do it, he can do it. Don't let the enemy cheat you of a wonderful, restored relationship. Don't let the enemy cheat you of wholesome living. Don't let the enemy cheat you of a, of a balanced mind. Don't let the enemy cheat you so that at the end of your life, you will look at it and say, 
oh, I was terrible. I, I, I just didn't deliver and I, I'm so miserable. Well, as long as you're alive, there's hope for you. And you can put things right and things can turn around. You may have had a broken marriage. You may have had a terrible situation. All kinds of situations. How many of you know that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins? Hallelujah. All our sins. Every single sin. And there's not a single sin that God says, no, I cannot forgive. But we need to also forgive. Just like God forgives. God forgives us. God cares for us. And he's waiting there like the father of the prodigal son for those who have strayed away from him to come back home. You know, and he's waiting for you to make the move because he has made every move. The father of the prodigal son didn't go chasing after him. He went on the balcony waiting for the, for the, for the son to come. And then one day the son came to his senses. And he came back to the father. And when the father saw him making that move, because unless you make a move of your own accord, there can be no true healing. You've got to take a step. There has to be some initiative on your part. You've got to say, yes, I've come to my senses now, and I need God's help and his healing in my life, and I'm opening myself to the Lord humbly. Don't let shame orientation, what will people think, and those kinds of stupid things keep you from experiencing what God wants you to experience in your life. What does it matter what people think? They're here today and gone tomorrow. It doesn't matter. What really matters is what God does in your life and the way it changes you, your family, your home, and how it changes your descendants and your pos posterity. That is what God wants to do in your life. God, our Heavenly Father, wants to heal and restore. He's a healing God. And we can receive that healing even now. Let's bow to pray. Now as you're bowed in his holy presence, this is a very important time. I can't emphasize how important these few moments are. Because in these few moments, you can experience God's touch in your life or you can let it pass by. Jesus is passing this way. If you're a child and you feel cheated because your father was not good, and he did so many wrong things. And because you feel that you have been cheated and you go on like this with that hurt and bitterness in your life, don't continue from today without sorting it out. This is a moment for you. This is a moment for you. You might say, my father is dead and gone. You know what? Your memory is still alive. The memory of him is still in your mind. You can do proxy forgiveness or you can forgive your father. Visualize him right now. With your eyes closed, head bowed, no disturbances please. You just visualize your father whom you had a rough time with and you say father or whatever you called him when you were a child, say I forgive you. I forgive you now. Say it now. Right where you are, I forgive you. As Jesus has forgiven me, I forgive you. That's what the Lord prayers, Lord's prayer says. If you're a father and you have been irritated by the rebellion of your child, your son or your daughter, and it bothers you, I know how it can bother you. As a man, your ego plays a big part in your life. And when somebody who is weaker and smaller than you rebels against you, it's not easy to handle because you're a man. It's not easy. It hurts. And then, as a man, usually you keep it inside. You don't tell anybody. It's inside there. And it's cooking. And it hurts. If you're a father who knows the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal savior, why don't you forgive your child? 
visualize that kid, boy or girl, and say, I forgive you. Mention the name and say, I forgive you in the name of Jesus for that incident. For the thing you said. Sometimes kids react and say things that they never would have said if they were in their right mind. But under pressure, both children and parents say things that they regret later. If you're a wife and you're guilty of transferring your negative feelings to your child and creating a wrong attitude in your children... You need to ask the Lord to forgive you. If you have ridiculed your husband and diminished him in front of your children or talked about him to others in a derogatory way, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask him now. Ask him to forgive you. Jesus will forgive you. His blood will wash your sins away. You can be released. Sometime later, talk to your kids and tell them that you were not doing the right thing and that you're sorry for it. From then on, they will understand how to behave when they are adults. Ask the Lord to forgive you. This is the time. Now let's pray. We're going to pray for healing and restoration and forgiveness for wonderful things to happen. Let's believe the Lord right now. Pray after me out loud wherever you are. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you with my hurts and my sins and I ask you this very moment to forgive me dear Lord Jesus heal me touch my heart touch my mind touch my life touch my family with your nail scarred hand heal me restore us all that we may honor you Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's just rise to our feet and give the Lord a wonderful thanks offering for touching us in a moment. Hallelujah. Yes, God is good. There is no one like him. read these words from a song that I heard the other day. I love it. Because it tells us about the Heavenly Father. It says, We have a Heavenly Father above with eyes so full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know. So true about God, our Heavenly Father. And He can teach us to be the kind of Father that he wants us to be. Yes, I receive deliverance in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the truth that sets me free. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank the Lord for his healing power. Thank you for his healing power. If you reached out to the Lord, he's touched you. If you reached out to the Lord, he's touched you. Thank him for his healing power. Say thank you, Lord. I thank you for your healing power. I will not allow the enemy to defeat me and destroy me. I will walk in the freedom, the power, and the healing that Jesus gives to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you want prayer, we're here to pray for you and minister to you personally. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you now and until Jesus comes again. Amen. Walk in the power, the healing and the wholeness of your heavenly father. God bless you and be with you.